God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for your faithfulness for tuning into our uh, online service. That we continue to grow in God's word. We continue to be faithful, and you know, doing a church ministry is challenging. You know, if you were a church, you need have a, like a lot of people are, are, are serving under you in the, in the leadership. Like I'm guessing, like when you're at New Hope, uh, Dolly, I'm sure that. Frank has, you know, Abraham and Arturo and different people serving under the New Hope Ministry Church, right? Yes. And, you know, it's it, it, it hard, but I'm very blessed having you and, and Genesis and Valencia and, of course, other girls as well. But we're going to keep going. And I'm going to give you something amazing fact. Uh, I have a friend named Jed. He has a son named Jude. And he's three years old. He was born on April 27, 2020, the same time we started the church. So I have a chance to to meet with you. His son is three years old. So that's that's a that's a beautiful blessing to to see his son is three years old as well. Uh, to keep you guys updated, everything's in the work right now. Um, we are going to do youth night, but we're going to do it in Edinburgh in March, and we are going to do our youth connection ministry at New Life Family Church. I don't know, you know, Eli Lada. No. Okay, so they have a big youth group. I'm there Thursday night, they have a big youth group. So we're very excited to do uh, continue doing Youth Connection Media. I mean, no, Dolly, this coming February, it's going to be 12 years we've been doing youth, youth, youth events. I know. Yeah, how old is your brother? He's like 13 right now, right? Yes. Wow, does he have a cell phone? Yeah. I see, I see some of bounce pictures. Maybe after service, so. Um, yes, okay. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and, and well, open up in prayer, then we can get into the message as well. And let's go. Um, Heavenly Father, oh Lord, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do to help us. Father, we want to pray for all the, for every single student here in the Rio Grande Valley as they get ready for, for the, the cold season next week. Lord, I ask you to provide them jackets and sweaters and, and, and scarves and anything to keep them warm. I know Hollington ISD, they're doing a special, um, I guess like a gathering that they're, they're doing a lot of donation, working with the, with the thrift store, getting every, every, every student a sweater and a jacket. I, I know next week it's going to be cold in the 30s. Well, but Lord, we know that you were going to take care of us and we know you're going to continue to guide us there. And we declare in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Uh, if you guys know, we're going to continue with part two. I know last week we, we opened up with a, a sermon series on the power of light. We're talking about the power of vision, help the help Israelites. When Moses, he, he sent out the, the 12 spies, but two of those spies were faithful, Caleb and, and Joshua. When they saw the, the land was filled with milk and honey, and, and they were they were giant and they were just we were just, uh, the they were grasshoppers, but yet uh, but yet we Joshua if you guys know the story he continued to carry the Israelites into the promised land to Jericho. Moses, if you read number chapter twenty, he he strikes the ark. It's always good to have a vision. Now today, um, next week guys on January twenty first, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a break. But uh, so I, I am going to be attending Keith and, and, and of course soccer games as well. But, but I know Dolly is going to be sharing the word. I believe you're going to do it over the phone, right? Yes. Okay, so I know it's going to be cold. I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be cold next week. So it would be better for you to stay at home. You can do it over the phone as well. And we're going to continue the series. I know February, we're going to do another series called Love in February as well. But we're going to say thank you for what the Lord is doing as well for today. We're going to talk about life reset. I always like the beginning of the year, January, every year, you know, we always have like an inventory. We always like to have like an evaluation about life, the things we want to change, things that we want to accomplish, to feel optimistic, you know, just to feel that it would be a good year to, to continue to stay healthy, to continue to stay be faithful. Now, if you know, Dolly, I'm excited, so you're invited, you and your family. And, and June 15, we're going to do a 15 year in the birthday of tech ministry. Wow. I remember you came to my 12 year in the birthday. You were 13 years old, remember? Yes. And I still have a picture. With, I think it was me, you, and Naomi. And 
of, of carrying the flag, but we're gonna do it. At, we're gonna do our 15 year anniversary. It's gonna be at DTC Church, my home church. As you guys know, my pastor is Rudy and I'm Marie Batron. So I'm very blessed with my pastors for always helping me as well. And so we'll get into the message. Well, I just thought I'd talk about life reset. It's always good in January. It's always good to have clarity. You know, to have goals of things you want to accomplish for the 2024 year. And if you have your Bible, let's open up to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Give me a second, brother. Yes, absolutely, yes. Okay, cool. And, and, and so my brother, right now they went to the park, but I didn't, and it doesn't bring my attention as much. Mm. Well, I'm glad you continue to help with the youth group. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with the New Life Youth Group. They have a big youth group. They have like over 30 kids. Oh, wow. Yes, and so I'm there. Mm-hmm. So the, the okay. teacher... A little bit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Yes. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to his deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Now, I want to give you something interesting that I, 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 I heard. The purpose of life is to live a godly life, to live a life of righteousness. If you go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, First seek the kingdom, and his righteousness, all things will be added to you. If you go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, 5, and 6, that we, 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 we've been adopted to the family of Christ. We, we've been uh, uh, anew. We, 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 we're created to worship him in this life. You know, people always ask questions, what's my life, what's my calling, what I, what I hope to do, but the simple thing that the Bible says is that be holy, for I am holy, for, for to dedicate your life in Christ, pretend, Adali, that, that you're living in heaven, pretend that your life is centered around Jesus, because in this life, yes, we're going to fall, yes, we're going to get into temptation, but it's always good to, to live a life of Jesus, be a person of Jesus, and knowing that, and yes, we're going to have a lot of obstacles and, and, and time of struggle, but remember, uh, following Christ, it, it's going to be like a narrow road. Jesus never promised this life to be easy, but he did promise in, in, in the gospel that he'll send his Holy Spirit to, to guide you, to help you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is no combination for those on Christ Jesus, because well, so Jesus is not going to condemn you, but you are a children of a most living high God and let's go to our our first point point number one start asking God to do something new in your life and let's go to Revelation 21 verse 5 then he who fell on the throne said behold i make all things new and he said to me right for these words are true and faithful and he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end i will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts wow i have a good scripture um i don't know if you read revelation or dolly do you read revelation Yeah, talk about the tribulation period. I know the first book of Revelation talk about the letters of Paul, but it does get scary when you get to Revelation chapter nine and thirteen. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going back because I learned that this life is temporary. Everything that you see is temporary. The Bible says in James, we're like a fog. You know, if we 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 hear one second, we'll be gone. Now, this is a true statistic. Did you know every day they say over one hundred five? I mean. 
150,000 people die every day. This life is just precious. It's sad, you know, watching the news or, you know, watching what happened in your Bible elementary about the children or the 9-11 attack or anything. But yet, we do not fear. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, that our citizenship does not belong here. We belong in heaven. Now, I like what David said about the heart. Uh, let's go to Psalm 51, verse 10. If you know the story about David, David, uh, if you go back to First Samuel chapter 16, he was just attending the flocks and the sheep. He destroyed bears and lions, and King Saul appointed David to be the king. When later on he defeated the lion. Now, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he committed adultery. Yes, he was a murderer. And yes, he, 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 he deceived, but yet remember, David was very a sincere man in the book of Psalm 51. You guys can go ahead and read it in your own time. David asked to create in me a clean heart, a clean heart. Every day we need to renew our heart. Every day, that, yes, the heart is deceitful. Yes, we have emotions or feelings, anger, jealousy, or, but yet we need to ask the Lord to, to renew our hearts every day because, you know, the, you know we don't want to enter the, the, the kingdom of heaven you know, a lot of bitterness, you know, a lot of resentment. The Bible says in Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, that he's knocking at the door of your heart. Allow Jesus to come into your heart as well. And look at, now, I, I like this scripture right now. I'm in Jeremiah, but uh, we're going back to uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Uh, excuse me, I will go to James, chapter 4, verse 2. I mean, uh, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, yeah. I should get tabs on my Bible because it'll help me a lot. Yeah, that's the reason that I sent you my sermon a few days earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm, really, I'm really impressed that you, that you can find scriptures really fast in the Bible. Yes, I, I turned my heart in. So the scripture is Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Do not remember the, the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing now, shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Wow. Now, maybe a dangerous thing. We cannot live in the past. We cannot have you know, to live in the past. What happened, what happened yesterday in the past is gone. Our mind should be renewed to, to live in the future. Now, for example, did you know, Dolly, this coming October, the fall of October, it's going to be 20 years since I recovered a fumble for 8th grade football. Wow. That was, I was 14 years, about 20 years ago, because that was a good memory. I mentioned that to Coach Sainz, uh, and I was like, hey, Coach, you know, uh, we're going to go to the 8th grade home game because of that y'all playing so-and-so, but, wow, I thought I was 20, I was like, man, I was like 14 years old back then, but, but you see, the point is, uh, of a story, we cannot dwell living in the past. We can't think about the past mistakes. We can't think about, you know, what, what happened in the past because the Lord has forgiven us. He has made our sin white as snow. We should always think about something new, something new in the future, like new dreams, a new vision, you know, new opportunity, something new as well. And let's go to, I think I, I put Jane chapter, yeah, Jane 4-2. Can you read the first five words of the of that scripture? I think that you, you don't add because you don't speak or something like that. First five verses? No, yeah, just, just the one that says, if you don't ask, something like that. Can you read that one? James 4 2. It says, You lust and do not have. You murder and commit and Okay, there you go. I'm sorry. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Uh, that if you if you ask in prayer, the Lord is faithful to give it to you. 
Now, it, it's good that every year in January, when we start the new year, is ask the Lord to give you a restart. Ask the Lord to, to help you to to accomplish new opportunities in, in life. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call upon me, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you some great and mighty things. Jeremiah 29, 11. For the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans not to harm you, to prosper you, to give you hope in the future. The Lord has something greater in your life as well. And let's go ahead and continue. Let's go to point number two. Pinpoint specifically what I want change in me. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Now, this is, this is uh, what do you think about the scripture, Dolly, in your opinion? It's basically as like, ask yourself, do you really know God and do you, do you really have him in your life? Because, to give you a story, if this is more than just going to church every Sunday, this is more than just being involved, you know, in the, in the youth group. You know, you gotta seek the Lord every day. You know, you gotta find friends that have love of the Bible, you know, have fellowship with friends, you know, find friends that can guide you, can help you, or hold you accountable. Because, yeah, you can be disqualified, you know, you can be removed, but you know, we need to examine our hearts every day and to live a, a Christian life. Going back, that, yeah, we need to repent and we need to confess our sins. Because if we don't repent and we carry the, our sin into eternity, hell will be a plague. Hell is a plague of weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's why Jesus, who, who took the atonement for our sin, remember he, he got lashed 39 times? Yes. And he was, he was bloody and, and of course, they hang him on the cross. So remember this scripture, Dolly, in, in Galatians 2.20, if you've been crucified by Christ and you no longer live, but Christ lives in you, that's why it's important to examine yourself in the faith. Always examine yourself to grow. Because yes, you will make mistakes. And yes, you know, you will fall. But yet, you the Bible says in Luke 9.23, you carry your cross daily as well. And let's go ahead. So always remember to pinpoint specifically what um, what I want to change in me. And I'll point number three. Find some people that will support you in your life reset. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Let's go down to a little bit to Ecclesiastes. Let me go back up to Ecclesiastes. Uh, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. Then I return and consider all the oppression that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressor there is power, but they have no comforter. Now let's go to Romans 12, 5. one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having them gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Awesome. Now, this is very important, Adali. I know you're a teenager right now, but find someone that will support you in a, in a walk with the Lord. It could be your parents, it could be your friends, it could be your youth pastor, Abraham, anybody. That you that you trust can guide you can help you with your spiritual walk find like a mentor uh, for example my mentor is Rudy my pastor Rudy but I always trust in him to be a spiritual father in my life because Rudy he always guide me and give me good scriptures and I'm passing this on to you Adali but, but I'm, I'm mentoring you and helping you as well and that way in the future maybe in your 20s you can you can help 
a young girl, maybe she's 15, to, to help her out with the Bible too, right? Because it, it, we're, all, we're all one body of Christ. We're all together, just like in, in the beginning with the God of Abraham, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They, they, they were men of God. They, they feared the Lord. They continue, you know, even with, with Noah, Moses, or even throughout the Old Testament and so on, because they were followers of Jesus. We're all in one body of Christ. I like the Bible says in Timothy that we are soldiers of Christ as well. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. Oh, it's chapter 10. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is a manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more that as you see the day approaching. Now, it's it very important, Adali. It's always good to have a gathering of friends. I know in the school district, it's like, kind of hard because I don't know everybody, I don't know everybody but follow Jesus, right? No, it's, it's very hard. Everybody is just like, you know, about, like in the world and stuff. Yeah, TikTok videos and so on, right? Yes. Man, I wish you grew up in the 90s with me though because we didn't have social media, we didn't have cell phones. Mm-hmm. So I get back then, um, it was more like we would go outside a lot, we would hang out with friends and but now everything's all about social media and digital. Yes. Do you know about payphones? Payphones? Well, back in the of your age, when I was in McDonald's, I would use a payphone. I'd have put coins in the, in the, in the payphone call my, my, my mom would pick me up. Yeah, I know. I, don't, I, I haven't really seen much of those. When I was younger, I, I would see them, but I'm hardly anywhere now. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and, and, and continue. Point number four, eliminate, I want to say that word again, eliminate anything that is unhealthy for you. We'll go a few more scriptures to finish the message. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of, of will, willnesses, let us aside every weight and the sin which so easily and and us nerves us, and let us run with endurance in the race that is set before us, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow, and you know, this is this this should give you great confidence, Adali. We are surrounded by a great crowd of, of believers. I can imagine Moses, Elijah, I can imagine the disciples of Apostle Paul. They, 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 they fight a good fight. They, they run the grave. Even Daniel, remember we talked about Daniel? Yes. And remember Daniel, he was a man of prayer, and he come back, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Darius, everybody, to, to fall, to, to, to worship the, the God of Daniel, because they, they didn't do no more golden statue or anything like that. The, uh, can you repeat that scripture one more time? Hebrews 12, 1. Yes, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great of a cloud of willnesses, let us aside every weight and the sin which so easily enazareth us, and let us run with endurance that the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Yeah, we try to find Jesus. Often the friendship of our faith, man, I'm ready, Adali, you know, um, if the Lord, let's say if I, if I die, I'm ready to go home and be with Jesus. So, man, because the Bible says that uh, we're going to have a new body. There will be no more tears, no more death, no more anything. We're going to have perfect heavenly body. So that's something I'm looking forward to. But I know right now my, my purpose is to share Jesus here in this world as well. And let's, 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 let's see what Apostle Paul wrote. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. It's okay. Hello, 
In which you yourselves have once walked when, when you lived in them, but now yourselves are to pull off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Yeah, now this is very important, Adali. I like what you said. Get rid of any filthiness in your mouth. Like, get rid of profanity. Get rid of any, like, anything inappropriate. Our, 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 our mouth, did you know in the book of James, uh, our, our, the tongue is getting life and death. This is why we need to be wise how we talk. See, we need to be wise how we address ourselves as well. And let's go to our final scripture. And I I. I when I, uh, I've been reading the scripture, even when I, when I came to Christ when I was 17 years old, this is one of the earliest scriptures I, uh, of, of reading. Let's go to our last scripture, Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, we have become new in Christ. Just like we talk about in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, that all the things that happened in the past is gone. We have become anew in, in, in Christ. Amen. Uh, any, any words that you want to share about today's message, Adati? Well, a lot, of the, a lot of the scriptures are things that we have to implement in our lives. And even though it's hard, because having a life with Christ, it is it's hard and it's not easy. But it, it's what makes us stand from the, the rest of the people and walking into his, his steps, the right path, as he has chosen for us. We have to do We have to follow God's work. Yeah, but uh, remember that uh, maybe in your own time, Adali, you can read Ephesians chapter 1. No, no, let's go ahead and read that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, 5, and 6. Ephesians chapter 1? Yeah, verse 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Is your mom there? I don't know if she's listening to the message. Um, she's beside me. She's in her room. Okay. Yes. Ephesians chapter 1, 4, 5, and 6, right? Yes. Better. If, uh, Ephesians 1, uh, uh, verse 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, 5, and 6, yes. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame, blame, and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Always remember that in your lifetime, Adali. If you always think about your purpose, Always want to think about doing a life refit. Always think about that scripture. Ephesians 1, verse 4, 5, and 6. You can even write it down in your note or something. Because that's the, that's the whole idea of living this life. Because this life is just temporary. We, but yet, if you have your faith in Jesus, and you receive eternal life, we will be with Him for all eternity. But that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's one of the, the commandments that we should live. The, uh, faith in Ephesians chapter 1. Because remember, we've been predestined. We've been adopted into the family of Christ. We're, we're created to worship Him as well. Amen. Also, I want to say thank you everyone to tune in to our online service. We do have a Facebook page and YouTube and Instagram. And I want to say thank you for Jennifer Valencia. I know she's going back to school. So she's going to be doing the Bible videos uh, as well. 
Thank you, Genesis. I hope you have a safe trip going back to school. Stay warm, but it's gonna be cold over there. And let's go ahead and, and close in prayer. Um, Jesus, oh Jesus, Lord, we just follow you, Lord. Lord, you call the sheep, and the sheep listen to your voice when they follow you. Father, in this Bible, the, the voice is, is that come and penetrate in our heart. We follow your voice, Jesus. Lord, we, we, we might be tempted, we may fall to the darkness, but yet, you, Lord, you deliver us, and you set us free, Father. I know one day, Lord, we're going to be with you in present and paradise in heaven. But, uh, Father, we know that we're here for a purpose in this world, to, to worship you, to renew our heart, to uh, have our mind on you, oh, Lord. Just like the Bible says in Hebrew 12, 2, we say, I upon you, Jesus, you're the author of faith of our faith. Oh, and Jesus, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, Father. Lord, we're going to continue to cry out to you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity for the school district. Thank you, Lord, for the for me spending Bible scriptures every morning to all the young students as well. It, it, it's just such a blessing, Father, seeing, you know, Adali and, and all the, the younger generation stepping up with the gospel. And I know we have great insurance, Father, in the heavens, Father, when we declare in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Any, any last words you want to share, Adali? No, I'm just I'm forever grateful for all the blessings that God has put mm -hmm. into my life and also the work he's done in my family. And I'm also thankful for another year. Awesome. I know you're going to be a junior next year. Yes, I can't believe it how crazy time goes by. And well, I just ask that he guides me in the right path. Well, to be honest with you, time gets faster even when you hit your 20s and 30s. Because I remember, do you remember when you were a kid, the summer seems long? Yeah, it'll be forever. Yeah, then I remember when, when, it, when I'm 34, and the summer, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a timer, it just go by fast. Yes. Well, have a, have a safe week, Adali, you know, stay warm, and we're looking forward to hear your, uh, I believe like a devotional message next week on the 21st. Amen. And likewise, brother, take care. We'll see you soon. God bless you, man. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, brother. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our online service. Join us guys on January 21st. Adali Luna is going to be sharing a message as well. So stay warm. I know it's going to be cold. So it'll be in the valley. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week.